My name is Ethan Cox, and I'm queer and non-binary. I chose the word non-binary because it's actually a little bit vague. Non-binary is a term that envelops all sorts of different gender identities besides the binary gender identities of boy and girl. And for a long time, I was really stressed like trying to figure out what my own gender was. I was trying on different words and stuff, and none of them really felt right or really expressed what I was feeling. And in the end, I settled on non-binary because it was just that perfect amount of vagueness to say, I'm not exactly like other people. Um, I'm not necessarily a boy or a girl. I'm somewhere else on the spectrum. I feel like as I researched more about gender and I learned about um, colonialism really and about binary genders and other cultures that have non-binary gender identities, I learned that there are more options and you're really not as closed in as you think. The time that I felt like I've, I've loved being queer the most has been when I've been like studying the history of queer people and I think that that's something that's really really important especially now today and especially for young people is to know about queer history because when you look into the past and you see like the struggles that queer people have already gone through you feel like such an amazing connection and those are moments especially when I've been looking into the past that I've realized that like being queer is like being a part of a family we're not all like related by blood obviously but like there's such a strong connection between all of us when you study the past when you learn the history you feel so much less alone, you feel a lot of pride, and you feel a lot of just love. You'll feel better. Like, I really encourage anyone to study queer history if you haven't because it's very important and it will honestly make you feel better. I feel like actually the most intense times that I've felt hate for being queer have been times when I'm alone. For every memory that I have of someone shouting at me like some rude word or being hateful towards me, I have more memories of just like crying alone like in my bedroom or in the bathroom or something and just like feeling the hate come from within and i think the most important part to notice about that is the alone part because i would really encourage anyone out there who is feeling that shame inside of themselves to not suffer in silence bring that pain into the light and share it with other people. When you're alone is when that shame feels most powerful. And that's kind of an illusion. I don't know, you need to talk to someone that you can trust. I know that some people, you might feel like, oh, my family doesn't support me, or you know, I don't have any queer friends, like you live in a small town or something. Just find a way to reach out. I mean, especially on the internet, now that we have the internet, there's so many ways to connect with people. Suicide is like such a big issue in our community. The quieter you are about it and the more alone you are with it, the stronger that like hatred and shame becomes. Find someone you can talk to. It will help. I grew up in Maine, and a few years ago, I guess it was, well, Maine had a same-sex marriage as a referendum on the ballot one year. I joined the campaign to, for marriage equality. That was a really inspiring time in my life because I was doing something that I was really afraid to do, actually. Like, I was going out and canvassing and talking to people and doing phone banks. And it was like really scary to actually go out and like try to convince people that like you deserve rights. <laughs> it was so inspiring when on, you know, the results night of the election night when the results were coming in to see us win because we won and I felt like so accomplished and I felt like change was possible and I felt like the actions that I had taken had actually made a difference and I felt like the world was changing for the better and was listening. So definitely don't give up hope that you can't make a difference or that there's, there's no way you can make a change or it's all over. Definitely get out there and fight for what you believe in. You can change things. I would say to any LGBTQ youth today who are feeling scared or feeling sad or ashamed that now, I mean, take time to take care of yourself, to feel those emotions, but get right back up, find a way to fight back, even if it's in a small way. Connect with people around you, with your community, go online and speak with people, share ideas, stand up for your beliefs. Don't allow all of the terrible things you're going to see in the media or on social media to affect you. Just keep a laser vision on the future. Now is the time to be together. 
So reach out for other people, um, organize, speak up, go to protests, do whatever you need to do, make art um, to put your message out there. What kind of worlds do you want to create? What kind of worlds do you want to see your kids living in?